you know, NASCAR did not beget moonshine and moonshine did not beget NASCAR, but there was a connection. And there were folks, some media members that said, oh, NASCAR is not gonna want you to tell the story of moonshine and they're gonna want you to steer away from it. They were never opposed to that. They said, you just wanna tell it an accurate way. Just like, you know, we knew we had to tell the, the story of Dale Earnhardt's accident. And it was their idea that will show the investigation book to show why we put so much effort into what we could learn from it and improve safety. Because to me, Dale Earnhardt has two legacies. One is what he did on the racetrack. One is his legacy of safety afterwards. But we had started, you know, figuring, trying to figure out how to tell the moonshine story. And we asked Junior Johnson if he could help us maybe draw out what a moonshine still was or maybe even rebuild a smaller replica. Well, a guy that was helping us at the time on a contract basis had gone up to visit with Junior about that and a couple of other things and came back and said, I got good news, I think. What do you mean you think? said, Junior's working on that still, but it's full size. <laughs> And I don't think it's gonna fit in that area. And we got out the drawings and knew it wasn't gonna fit in here. And we're, you know, we were having regular weekly calls, if not twice a week with our exhibit designers and started talking to them about the still and said, you know, here's what we, what we have. And they said, well, it's not gonna fit in the area. I said, well, you know what we gotta do. And they said, oh, we, we know, because among the people that we had, had, had helped them learn racing was Junior. And they had spent about two hours and 45 minutes just picking his brain. So they knew the significance of Junior. So we made the room beside us a little bit smaller and broadened this out once we got the dimensions from Junior to make sure we could fit it in here. Well, you know, Junior delivers it with a couple of his guys and we put it in storage. And while they were putting it in storage, he looks at me, he says, now you boys did want one kind of like we used back in the day. I said, yeah, we were wanting something in kind of the 40s, 50s era. He says, that's what we used back then. He said, they're a little more sophisticated today. <laughs> I said, I'll take your word for it, Junior. <laughs> so then, that was 2008, so then fast forward to 2010, we had brought it over here along with other things that were in storage, and, and exhibit fabricators put exhibits together. You got exhibit designers and then exhibit fabricators. They were trying to put it together, and they couldn't figure it out, so our historian called Junior and said, Junior, can you talk me through how to put this together? We're having a hard time figuring out where to connect different things. He said, well, it might be a little easier if I just came down there and helped you. Sure enough, he lived a couple hours away then. It was within three hours he was here. Uh, and, and Buzz called me and he said, I thought you might want to know Junior's coming now. I said, do what? He said, Junior's coming now and he's gonna help us put the still together. I said, well, if we're not there with cameras, don't do anything. So we mobilized some people, <coughs> excuse me, to make sure we had cameras. So he comes in through the back area because this is all a construction zone then. This is January, February time frame. So he was like everybody else. He had to wear hard hat, safety glasses, and vest. So we walked through and you should have seen the looks on the construction workers side thinking, is that who I think it is? <laughs> he had two things with him, right. pipe wrench, channel lock pliers, kid you not. He comes in and he steps inside where that pail is and he started saying, you know, give me this, give me that, hold this, and put it together and connected everything to it. Now, if you put that in perspective, think about it. Cooperstown opened in 1939. That's like, and, and when Junior built this, we hadn't voted on the first class. Here we are in January, February 2010. He had been selected in 2009, he's going in in May. That's like Babe Ruth designing, building, delivering, and installing one of the very first exhibits in the Cooperstown. And to me, and it's a legitimate part of history, so to have an inaugural Hall of Famer do that for you at no cost, just to help be a part of it, that's always gonna be special, and I think tells a special story.